And um, I want to, <clears throat> uh, you don't have to put this up. I'm just going to give you this verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. And it's this, this is what it says. It says, no temptation. I just want you to listen. You don't have to watch it. And I just want you to hear the heart tonight. It says, no temptation has seized you except for what is common to man. Did you know there's a battle going on right over here? Did you know there's a battle going on right behind there? There's a battle going on right there. There's a battle going on right there. There's a battle going on right there. There's a battle going on right here. There's a battle going on. There's a battle going on in everybody's life right now. Everybody is going through a battle. And this is why we gather, is to be equipped to fight. And uh, faith is not what you know. Faith is not what you know. Faith is what you believe. You can know a lot of scripture and not believe it. You can know a lot of scripture and have once to believe it, but have fallen from faith. See, this is why it's so important to be connected, because faith comes by hearing. And sometimes you need somebody, you need to hear somebody else tell you the word again. Not just yourself. Not just your you need to hear it. Somebody, this is why faith talks and faith friends and faith buddies where you can sit down and you can be authentic and say, man, I've just been going through this and you can have somebody encourage you in the Lord. It's crazy how courage allows you to get up and out of the pit and take a step. So, in keeping what, how do you know if you believe? How do you know if you believe and not just know? Because it's coming out of your mouth. Romans, Romans, we, we, right where we said, where does faith come? Romans 10, 17, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, right? Just a few verses before that, it says when you believe in your heart, you would speak with your mouth. And you could go over to 2 Corinthians 4, 13, having the same spirit of faith, we believe, so therefore we speak, we believe, therefore we have spoken, sticking with the same, with the spirit of faith. When you have a spirit of faith, you're going to say something. And so faith is not so much a matter of, uh, um, this I had wrote something down just from the Lord. Um, it's not so much a choice. Faith is not so much a choice as much as it is revelation because you were willing to hear. You can be in a place and have known the word, and you can be in a battle, and you could have heard that greater is he that's in you. Than he that's in, than, than, than he's greater in you for, for concerning what you face. You could have heard before, and by his stripes you're healed. You could have known those things. And you're like, yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. But if you're willing to hear, if you're willing to hear, that's when the teacher shows up. See, because any time the word goes forth, the greatest teacher, explainer, mastermind communicator on your and my level to teach us where we're kind of getting hung up shows up. The Holy Spirit comes when the teaching of the word. The Holy Spirit shows up and talks to you right where you're at, right what you need. Right wh- he's, he's amazing. And, but only if you're willing. So faith is not so much about a choice trying to believe as much as it is you and I willing to receive, willing to hear, willing to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us. And when he does, then you now also declare or come into agreement with the Lord. This is why the difference between the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit. You can't just quote the word and call it faith. The shield of faith, it sounds a lot like where Paul said, I believe it will be just as it was told to me when they were in the shipwreck, and not one of us will perish. I believe. What do you believe? It will be as it was told to me. So what what it was told to you, it doesn't have to sound like John 3.16 or or, Jude 1.8 or whatever scripture you're going to pull out. It sounds like we're increasing and we we will not lack for one thing. That's faith. I think sometimes we, we, we forget that the scriptures, they, they were written. They weren't, there was no like, as they spoke with faith in, in Acts, it wasn't like they could quote Ephesians. Hello. They had to quote a conviction. 
And it was a conviction because they were willing to hear. They were willing to hear. So he that has ears to hear, let him. Let him hear. And that's how faith comes. That's how faith comes, and then faith can be released. So, because everybody here is going through a battle, it's important that we recognize how you and I fight. You and I don't fight. I was telling my son the other night, I said, you know, having a sword is great. But when you have a sword and you just got shot again with an arrow, you can't swing that sword very well. You know what I'm talking about? You know, there's something about like when you're trying to make some headway, like in a battle, you've seen it in the foxholes and they're in the trenches. What do you do if you're going to make some headway? Someone's got to do some... And it, and it doesn't have direct aim and reference and all this kind of stuff, but it does have a great intention and we're making progress and let me just tell you how big and strong, let me just tell you, and it's like you can have one guy with three machine guns and he's just telling the other people how big and strong he is so that he can make an advancement and we have to start speaking who our God is, but you can only do that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus is he's Lord so, so he's the one, that he's the ruler. He, I come under him and what he says. So this matters. So because of that, we're going to just take the next few weeks. In this, in this time, we're going to listen to a teacher of faith. Let faith come. Just let it come. And, and, and we're going to begin to, and he's, what he's going to be talking about is you and I, not, not just hearing the word, but just the power of moving our tongue. The power of moving our mouth. The power of using our steering wheel to direct our lives. The power of just, and even you saw it tonight, as you magnify the Lord, man, there's a change. There's a clarity. There's a hope. There's a step. There's a, and so that's what we're going to do over the next, uh, probably until um, sometime the first part of March. Um, all the way, you know, maybe up to Easter, but I, the first part of March. Uh, before we get all the things implemented, which we're really excited about. But um, anyway, that's a mouthful, all right? And sometimes you just need a buddy to tell you the, the word. Hey, would you tell me how blessed I am? T t tell me how blessed I am. How blessed am I? Tell me how blessed I am. Come on, tell me I need to hear it some more. Tell, tell me, tell me, tell me how rich I am. Tell me how rich I am. Tell me, tell me who, 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 who do I pull on? You're my God. Who's got your God? Who, like you got to have somebody sometimes. Yeah, I know this. I know this. I know this. Well, and I, I was in a conversation just very recently, and I said, yeah, I know this. I know this. I know this. And this person said, um, well, I don't know if you want me to say anything, but because you'd already know. And I said, yeah, just go ahead and say it. Just tell me what I need to know. Tell me what I need, not what I need to know. It's not what you need to know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's what I need to hear. It's not what I need What I need to know. Tell me what I need to hear. I need to hear. I need to be reminded again. And from that place, man, there's victory and there's life found. And maybe you've never heard some of the stuff that he's going to be talking about before. But I'm telling you, what will come is the teacher. And he'll come alongside you and say, hey, you see how we've been talking this way? See how we haven't been saying anything? You, you recognize when in worship when it, you feel the presence of God and it's like, wow, that's so cool. But yet your mouth isn't moving. What would it sound like if your voice was added to the anthem? You know, where your voice was saying, oh, and, and so because so all around you is this. But, but what does it look like to get in the flow? Yeah. Amen? Amen. So um, we're going to hit play. Uh, we're we're going to actually... Um, we're going to give tonight and uh, as, as we do that. Um, go ahead and bring those buckets and we'll pass them. And, uh, and then we're going to hit play. And, you know, that's something I haven't ever forgot. And that's just this reminder is that when, worship, when we give, it's just a worship to the Lord. Let's make sure we keep it that. Let's make sure never what's heard. And we, when we understand this and hear this from this house, it's always about worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And sometimes we have to check where our trust is, all those kind of things. But let's keep the heart pure. Let's make sure that what we hear, anytime something comes from the stage, anything, no matter who's doing the offering and the offering message, it truly is not out of compulsion or, or, or pressure, but it is a willing, 
a willingness, a heart that just says, God, I just want to just want to love on you tonight. I just want the message of your gospel to go forth. I want people to be equipped. I want mission, I want missions to go forth. I just in this world, I want to be a light. Amen. Father, thank you for your for this these people. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for an advancing. Thank you for a stepping forward, for minds being renewed tonight, for healing, for truly, just as we sung tonight, miracles. Thank you for just but God moments. And Lord, we come tonight as we sit before your word. We're asking you to speak clearly. And we bring our tithes, we bring offerings. We just, we bring our love and our heart to worship you tonight, to hear from you. We call these tithes, these offerings blessed. Lord, this, this ministry and every person here, this ordered steps, we just speak order over their lives right now. Where there's chaos, we speak calm. Where there's confusion, we speak clarity. Father, thank you as we move forward. Father, I thank you for a spirit of joy and a garment of praise in, for a spirit of heaviness. Thank you for uh, joy in this house, joy in these hearts. Thank you for just a lifting of heads tonight that only you can do. In the name of Jesus, and everyone said, amen. Right after we give, just you can, uh, 15 seconds or so. too and you know the word is is to say it's rich is an understatement it's just it's it's living and and it's quickening and every word is life and light truth in first Corinthians 2 um, verse uh, 4. 1 Corinthians 2 and 4. He said, uh, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. And that's not the end of the sentence, verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now it is the case with many uh, church going people, religious facility attending people, that their faith is in the wisdom of men. Their faith is in the writings of such and such or in the teachings of this one or that one or group or in the tenets of this denomination or that group. But the Spirit of God said here through Paul that our faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. No matter how much you have received through a ministry gift, your faith shouldn't be based on them. But on what? In the power of God. Why this reveals that God is real. Yes. Not just something to be talked about and thought about, but something and someone to be experienced. Yes. Yes. Experienced. Yes. God is real yes. and he, his power is without limit as far as we know. It was what he said. So the power, we see it all around us. I, it's one of the most foolish things you ever heard when people say, I don't, there's no evidence of God. Uh, you're evidence of God. <laughs> the ground you're standing on is evidence of God. The air you're breathing is evidence of God. Now you can deny it if you want to, but it took power to create matter, energy, our star. Right? Yes. The forest, the animals, everything. 
it took power. And when people say, well, I, I just believe in the Big Bang. I just believe in evolution. Well, you said it right. You believe. Because it's not science. Y'all with me or not? No, it's not. It's unproven theory. And it remains unproven theory because it's not true. <laughs> you can't prove something that's not true. You can lie about it. You can fabricate stuff. But you can't prove something that's not true. Well, what do you mean? Well, if you say, I believe that everything is self-generated. It sprang into existence by itself. Really? That's a belief. That's not science. That's a, it's an unproven theory. It's a belief. Now, we weren't there in Gen when, when you read Genesis 1 in the beginning. Right? But I believe it. That's what I believe. Instead of that other goofy thing. I believe that God said and it became. That's how it became. Well, where did God come from? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So it's a belief. Right? But I I don't just have a, uh, a concept. I have an experience. Yes. Yes. Come on, are you with me or not? Yes. I have an experience. I have experienced personally the presence of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Have you? Yes. I said I have experienced personally the power of the Lord. I've been healed. I've been delivered. I've been filled with the Spirit. I was there when it happened. And like one fellow said, a, a, a man or woman with an experience is never at the expense of a man with an argument. What do you mean? You can argue all you want to about it, but I was there. It's like saying, you know, uh, there's no water in that pool. There's no water in that pool, and I'm swimming. <laughs> I'm wet. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but we can prove there's no water in the pool. No, you can't. I'm wet. You can never convince me there's no water in the pool because I'm wet. <laughs> and you can never convince me that there's no God or that God is not real because I'm wet. I'm wet with his presence. I'm wet with his experience. Hallelujah. So my, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for the people, the men and women that God has put in my life. People like Brother Kenneth Hagin, my father in the faith. But my, my faith is not based on Kenneth Hagin. Huh? No. I have experienced what the Lord gave him and taught. That experience was not through him. It was direct from, me, from the Lord to me. Hallelujah. So my faith is in the power. Of God. Come on, say it out loud. My faith, My faith stands, stands in the power of God. Power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that okay? Yes. Man, it makes you stable too. Yes, yes. Hmm? Yes. If Phyllis and I went nuts tomorrow, <laughs> not believing that's going to happen, okay? <laughs> not planning on it. But if you heard next week, Keith and Phyllis went crazy. <laughs> they have left the ministry. They're acting stupid. Should you quit God? No, sir. Huh? But you see, if your faith is based on us, then if we failed, now you, now you know what I'm saying. A lot of people, when their pastors or their leaders failed, they quit going to church. They quit praying. They quit reading. And that is just ignorant because God didn't fail you. Right? God didn't let you down. And you should have known those people were human. Just like you. You should have known they could fail. 
<laughs> Y'all are quiet. I'm not planning on doing anything stupid tomorrow. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm just giving you an example. But if you are rooted and grounded in your own experience in God personally, you should be steady with him no matter who does what or who doesn't, who stays hooked or who doesn't, who fails or who doesn't, right? Because your faith wasn't in God through them. Your faith wasn't just in their wisdom in what they believe and teach and preach. Your faith is in the living God, in his power, in his life, in his spirit. And if that's true, you'll remain steady no matter what anybody else does. You'll remain solid. Hallelujah. Now, notice in this text again, he said... uh, He used two words here in verse uh, four. Uh, Look at the uh, Young's literal translation of this, if you would. Verse four, he said, uh, my word and my preaching. So he mentions two things. And this word here is the word, the Greek word, logos. And there's two main words in the New Testament. There's more than that, but two main ones in the New Testament for word or for what you speak. And it's logos and rhema. We'll be talking about this a little bit more. And yes, that's what the school is named after, uh, Brother Hagin's ministry. Rhema is the spoken utterance, the spoken word. And he said, my word and my preaching. So why would you say that? Not just my message, but my words are what? Not in persuasive words of human wisdom. My words are in demonstration of the spirit and of power. My word and my preaching. The title of our new series is The Word of Power. The Word of Power. Why why talk about this? Well, in talking about the power of God, we need to see how Jesus walked in this power, how he did it. And you'll find, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but you'll find that the main way He released power was through his words, through what he said, through his speaking. And if you and I are going to experience power, do you think it would be connected the same way? To our words, our words. Look with me, if you would, in in the proverb, go back to the book of Proverbs, please. And the 18th chapter and the 20th verse, Proverbs 18, 20. He said, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the what? Fruit of his mouth. Really? And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Do you want to live good and have plenty to eat and have plenty of money, plenty of the things that you need? It's connected to your mouth. Can you see that? It's connected to your, the fruit of your mouth. The increase of your lips is how you get filled. That's like we were talking about in the offering a few minutes ago. Prosperity doesn't start externally, it starts internally. It starts in your heart and it's released with your mouth. How are you doing financially? Huh? What if I'd asked you yesterday, before we were sitting up here in church today talking about our words? Huh? 
What would a lot of Christian people say? A lot of good people, what would they say? Well, you know, we're, we're doing okay. You know, things just hadn't quite got back to normal yet. And, but, you know, we're, we're making it. That's what you've set in your life, is making it. Now, I know most people don't believe this. Most church-going people don't believe this. And you can tell it by the way they talk. And if you are not continually making adjustments to what you're saying, you don't believe this yet either. Because nobody, James talks about this. If anybody doesn't miss it in what they say, they are a fully developed, perfected individual. So what does that mean? What's most people doing? They are missing it. Right and left. Right in what they are saying. Does it make any difference? Many people think, oh, now, you know, don't, don't get legalistic with me about every word that comes out of my mouth. I can think of scriptures that talk about every word that comes out of your mouth. And yes, it, it requires some effort. But what we need to realize is that the enemy is continually trying to get words in your mouth that give him access. He is continually. There will be times you, your flesh will want to say bad stuff so much you'll have to bite your lip because there's pressure to say it. Why? That, that's spiritual. I said that's spiritual. Why? Why would the enemy care? Because he can't just do whatever he wants to do in your life. Why do we, we talked about this for some weeks a while back, you know, about not giving any place to the devil. How do you give place to the devil? One of the big ways that you do it is through words that he brought to you that you didn't even realize he brought to you. And one of the problems is wrong speaking is what most people on the planet are doing. And so it won't stand out. You won't even notice it. Because most everybody else, that's how they talk. That's what they're saying. How did Jesus talk? Huh? Did he say a bunch of things he didn't really mean? Huh? Uh-uh. No. The word that became flesh spoke the words of God. He said, I only say what I hear the Father say. He was very disciplined in what he said. And when he spoke, there was power in it. Yes. Hallelujah. I reckon there's a lesson for us right there yeah. in any of this. Huh? I said Jesus was very disciplined in what he said. He said, I only say what I hear the Father say. The words I speak, I speak not of myself, but the Father that sent me. He does the works. That's what Jesus said. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. Was Jesus disciplined in what he said? He said, he said he, I only say. That means he didn't talk all this other junk. And yet when he spoke, be still. <laughs> there was power. Yes. Hallelujah. Get up and walk. <laughs> there was power. I said there was power. Be clean. Woo. There was power. I said, there was power. And Paul said, when I came to you, it wasn't with a bunch of intellectual and philosophical stuff. My words and my preaching was in demonstration of the Spirit and with power. How many believe that? 
Well, you, you see it in manifestations. Paul spoke to spirits, and cast them out. Paul spoke to situations and they changed. I mean, he's walking, following in the footsteps of the master. Is this available to you yes. and me? Yes. Hmm? yes, it is. I said, yes, it is. Keep reading this text here. I mean, Proverbs 18, 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Do you want your life full of the things that you need? Yes. Where should you check? It's got to increase in your mouth before it increases in your bank account. It's got to increase in your mouth the increase of your lips, that has to happen first. Then you'll, you'll experience the, the being filled. Keep reading, verse 21, he, he, he goes further. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Not just getting your needs met, not just getting filled, but death and life. Now how much more uh, definite can you say than that? That's right. How serious is it what we say? Death and life. Death and life. Yeah. Yes. That's how serious it is. It's in the power of the tongue. Is that true or is that not true? True, true or not true? true? Most people don't believe that. That's right. Most church going people don't, don't believe this. Why do you say that Brother Keith? You can tell by how they talk. If you believed that, you would never talk death. You would, you would not. You'd refuse to. You'd never say, I can't. There's no way. It's too late. You'd never say something like that. <laughs> if you believed in the power of your words. Did I lose somebody? I lost somebody. I felt him unhook, and the trailer rolled back down the, the hill. I, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to back, back down the hill. <laughs> Jack up your trailer, and we're going we're gonna to hook back up. <laughs> this is something that your flesh doesn't want to hear. Because it requires something of you. And it requires something of you every day and every night. But you ignore it at your own cost. Right? And if you ignore it, you're acting like you've already arrived at governing your tongue and your words when you're not even trying. And if you ignore it, you're giving the enemy words. How much more effort does it take to say something good that the Holy Spirit can work with than say something bad that the enemy can work with? I mean, you got to force out your breath and, and shape the words. Huh? Why not just say something good? Even if it's not something you see, call those things that be not. As though they were. Yes. Right? Amen. Even if it's not something you feel. That's how faith people function. Yes. That's how they operate. Yes. They don't talk how they feel. That's right. That's right. They don't talk how it looks. They use their words to change things. Yes. Yes. Amen. There you go. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you say, it's bad. It's so bad. Oh, Oh, Lord, it's so bad. Well, how does that help you? How does it help you? Is anybody else listening to these things? Yes. Wrong spirits are listening. They have, you have authorized them to work bad in your life. When you say it is bad, it is so bad. I don't think we'll ever get over this. Hmm? Yeah, it has scarred me for life. Oh, dear Lord, you don't know what you're saying. 
I don't think I'll ever get over that. Well, then you probably won't. You could. You could already be over it. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, the Bible says. How did Jesus speak? Do you think you would ever hear Jesus say, fellas, I don't know how we're going to get out of this. <laughs> huh? Can, can you imagine no. Jesus, you know, you, you being with the 12 or the 70 and getting up one morning and coming to breakfast and Jesus sitting there, going, what's wrong with Jesus? And he said, I'm just so depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sick of these Pharisees. <laughs> And said, you see, I, I am fed up. I've had it. I have had it. I'm done. <laughs> Can you imagine Jesus? Now, now, come on, think about this. If he had talked like that, his words would be as powerless as most Christians are. Because out of mercy, the worse your words are, the less power you should have. You're hurting yourself. You could hurt yourself more and other people. What if every word that came out of your mouth came to pass? How would you be doing That just scared me to death, bloop. <laughs> have, you, have you noticed? Uh, you know, I, I hope you're not listening to so much of that, but much of the modern and popular music, I don't care if you're talking about the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, now, whatever. I want you to notice next time you hear any, how many times you'll hear something about going crazy or losing your mind? It's woven through many, many of these songs. Going crazy, losing my mind. It's not an accident. That's not a coincidence. The enemy got involved in the inspiration. Why? He wants you to get attracted by the catchy tune and the rhyming and he wants you to get that in your mouth and he wants you to say it 3,000 times that you are losing your mind, that you are going crazy. Hmm? The more you say it, the stronger it gets in you. And you begin to believe it and say it, it gives him a right to start messing with your head. Does it matter what we say? Life and death. Death and life. Is in the power of the tongue. Well, I can tell we're enjoying this, aren't we? Whew. Man. This was what you've been waiting on right here. <laughs> Man, I wish Brother Keith would teach on the words of our mouth. Yeah, you do. I said, yeah, you do. Because you are all excited about the power. I said the power. And if we don't, if we don't get this part right, you, you can forget about the other part. About the power. Because how did Jesus walk in this power? How was this power manifested? Is it a coincidence that the power manifested the same time he spoke? Mm -mm. That's how it works. That's how it's always worked. And we're told to be followers of God or imitators of God as dear children. Hallelujah. Go with me if you would to Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke chapter 4, 
These things are given to us, these scriptures, these words, these examples, not just that we can ooh and ah about history. They're given as examples for our life. Today, we're supposed to practice these same things. Jesus in, in Luke 4, the Bible said, you know, after the temptation in the beginning of the chapter that he came out in the power of the Spirit, verse 14 said. He returned in the power of the Spirit. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. Now, why would that be? First of all, this tells you that this has not happened up until now. Jesus was not famous when he was 28. He was not known. Now that's astounding, isn't it? <laughs> uh-uh. Why? Why now? Well, when he was baptized in the river, he came up out of the river, and the Spirit of God came on him. Hallelujah. This is power. I said, this is power. Then he overcomes the temptations. The enemy was unsuccessful in getting him into sin or condemnation and trying to rob his faith, which is key to releasing the power. So unsuccessful. And so Jesus comes out then in the power of the Spirit. And so this fame that goes abroad about him is in connection with the power. Not just his teachings, but the power. Are y'all with me? There were power manifestations. Go with me if you would to verse uh, 22. It says uh, in his own hometown where he's brought up in, in Nazareth, uh, it said they all bear him when he said today the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. They, they wondered at the gracious words that proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? It was his words that got their attention. And in verse 32, they were astounded at his doctrine. For his word was with power. That's our text. For the series. Huh? Yeah. They were astounded at his doctrine. See, isn't it the same thing we saw in what Paul said by the Spirit that his word and his preaching was in demonstration of the Spirit and power? And you see that same thing here. Doctrine, well, that's teaching. And then also it mentions his word. His word was with power. Everybody say his word was with power. And this includes authority and power, like we think of power. In fact, uh, you could translate it like this. When Paul said, my, my word and my teaching, preaching was with demonstration of the Spirit with power, you could say it like this, my logos was with dunamis. My word was with power. And Jesus also said his word was with authority and power. Say it out loud. His word, his word. Was, with power. was with power. Verse 33. In the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, you Jesus of Nazareth? Are you come to destroy us? I know you who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him. And said, hold your peace. We'd say, shut up. And come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. And they were all amazed. And they spoke among themselves. And they said, what a word is this. For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits. And they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place in the country round about. About what? What? The power of his word. That was what shook them. That was what shocked them. 
was when he spoke, things happened. Hallelujah. I said when he spoke, things happened. Things changed. Things happened when he spoke. Now the, the enemy is really scared that you'll find out about this. Because <laughs> he had enough trouble with one Jesus for three and a half years. The last thing he needs is millions huh, of sons of God walking around, commanding things, and change. Oh, that's his worst nightmare. That is his worst nightmare. And he has been, sadly, too successful in keeping people in the dark and confused about this. And one of the things that has been successful is convincing people that Jesus could do that because he's the son of God. But you can't because you're not. So don't even try it. Most church going people believe that. They believe Jesus could do that. But not you. So they're saying Jesus did this as God, not as man. And since you're a man, not God, you can't do this. And the enemy really, really hopes that you keep believing that. <laughs> but it's a lie. I said it's a lie. Jesus didn't do what he did as God. No, he didn't. He is God. God manifested in the flesh. But he didn't function as God. Philippians says he laid aside his mighty weight and power and glory and became like other men. You can see that in how this happened right here. Um, does God need to be anointed? The answer is no. He is the anointer, right? Huh? Who are you going to find to anoint God? Uh-uh. No. That's why God says, he said, I swear by myself. Yeah. Why? Ain't nobody else he could swear by. <laughs> He's it. Nobody higher. Nobody greater. Nothing more powerful. And um, Jesus had to be anointed, didn't he? Like we said, just as much the son of God at 28 as he was at 30 and yet not even known, much less miracles and signs and wonders, until what? Until the anointing came on him. The Spirit of God came on him. This, this proves he's functioning as a man, because it wasn't until he was anointed that these kind of things began to show up and happen. What, what does that mean? He did it as a man. Somebody say, he did it as a man. Say it again, he did it as a man. He did it as a man. He did this. You might say, he raised the dead as a man. Yeah. Huh? He cast out spirits as a man. Right? Ministered healing to the sick as a man. Raised the dead as a man. Walked on the water as a man. As a man. He did it all as a man. And I can prove it to you numerous ways. We've already given evidence, but keep, keep reading this and then I'll take you to another place. They said, what a word, verse 36. They were amazed and spoke among themselves. Now, this is not the case just when somebody taught and preached, even if they preached something that was an unusual idea. It didn't leave everybody astonished. They're amazed at what? What a word this is. For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits and they come out. They obey. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. 
And, notice the very next thing, and he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. And they besought him for her. And verse 39, and he, Jesus, stood over her and did what? And did what? Rebuked what? The fever. Have you ever talked to a fever? Most church people don't. Somebody said, well, yeah, but, yeah, but that's Jesus. I've been talking about this already. He did this as a man, showing you how to do it, showing us how to do it. Jesus did what? He stood over her and he rebuked the fever. I know years ago I was reading this and I got there and, and, I, and I realized it said he rebuked the fever. It caught my ear stronger for the first time. And I thought, now hold on, hold on. He's not praying. This is not prayer. He's not talking to the father about this. And he's not talking to Peter's mother-in-law. She's delirious with fever. He's talking to a fever. A fever. And I thought, can a fever hear? Can a fever hear? And I read the rest of the verse, and it left her. I thought, yep. 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 Fevers can hear. If fevers can hear, ulcers can hear. Cancer can hear. Come on, y'all with me or not? Your blood can hear. Your kidneys can hear. Everything that exists was created by the spoken word of God even if it's been challenged or distorted or cursed, and if it was word formed, it can be word changed, word fixed. If it came into existence by spoken words, it can be altered by spoken words. And that's what Jesus did. How many believe this happened exactly like you read it right here? It left her And uh, immediately, everybody say immediately. Immediately Immediately she arose, she got up and ministered to them. Now you talk about a quick recovery. (laughs) Why? (laughs) Because the fever and whatever was causing it was not allowed to hang around and gradually let up or or gradually dissipate, the Lord rebuked the fever. Now, how do you rebuke something? He probably said something along the lines of, get out of here, get out. Fever, get out of her body. And I mean, in a moment, she opens her eyes, she sits up on the side of the bed, Jesus, you hungry? It says she ministered to them, right? So she immediately started doing something to to help them, to minister to them, and they had just come in, so probably they were hungry. And that is also the best use of a healing. Huh? Best use of a healing, a deliverance, a recovery, is to immediately start ministering to the Lord's people, using your strength to do something for him and his. But if he rebuked the fever, should you rebuke fever? Hmm? Speak to indigestion. Speak to congestion. Speak to growths, tumors. Speak to them. I said speak to them. Go with me to Mark, the 11th chapter. Now, there's some verses here in Mark 11 you may have heard before, but I assure you, you don't know all there is to know about this. Mark 11, what happened in this situation is that Jesus and the 12 are walking and traveling, and he speaks to a tree. He speaks to a tree, a fig tree. 
says, no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. Jesus spoke to trees. He talked to trees. Was he crazy? Huh? Mentally imbalanced. Not living in reality. Huh? Is it okay for you to speak to trees? If you got a place especially or a yard or anything like that, you ought to talk to your trees. Huh? You ought to talk to your trees and your shrubs and your flowers. If you got a garden, you ought to talk to it. You got crops, you ought to talk to them. That's not prayer. I said that's not prayer. How would you talk to them? Help me out. What do you say to them? Now, let's just let's stop right here. When you start talking about this, people, some people even get indignant and go, that's just nuts, that's just nuts. And yet, they've already been doing it. Huh? But only on the negative. You stupid weeds. Oh, I got some dumb briars. You dumb briars, you stupid briars. Huh? Huh? What is wrong with you, tree? (laughs) See, why is it that people don't even notice if you talk to inanimate objects as long as it's negative? Huh? As long as it's negative. You can cuss your lawnmower. People won't think a thing about it. You can kick your car and call it names and talk to it. But If you say, you're a blessed car, I call you blessed, huh? Then people go, ooh. (laughs) Hey, talking to it is talking to it, right? That's something I say uh, uh, almost every trip that we make in a plane. I say, uh, uh, this plane is blessed. Yes. It's a blessed plane. It, is. it functions well. Uh-huh. It works well. Yes. It'll serve us well yes, all the time we have it. Yes. It's a blessed plane. Yes, it is. Huh? You say that on a regular basis, that gets built into you. Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. You, you're convinced of it. You expect it. Yes. Right? You should say that over your things, yes. right? Yes. Your, your vehicles, your, your stuff, your, your house, your place. Your... Amen. Hmm? Amen. You should never call something cursed or curse it. If it, it, it's something, that, a possession that belongs to you. If it's something that needs to die and go away, then yeah, like Jesus cursed the fig tree. You can do that too. And his disciples, they, this was still new to them too. They're, I don't know what they did, but you know, they heard him. The Bible said they heard him. He's, and, and they're like, who's he talking to? That tree right there. <laughs> the fig tree? Yeah. Shh. Yeah. <laughs> and so then the next day, some, I guess 24 or some hours later, They come back by, and you couldn't tell that anything changed when he spoke to it. There was no rumbling. There was no lightning. He's just talking to a tree. But then, uh, some 24 hours later, when they get to that same spot on their way back, of course, you know, they looked at the tree. (laughs) You would too, because Jesus cursed it. And the thing had already dried up. Well, that's too quick in the natural, right? It was green yesterday and it's totally dried up and scripture said it had dried up from the roots. So it started where you couldn't see. But it worked so quickly that it, within just a day, the leaves had already dried and it was obvious it was dead. And so was it Peter that remarked, Jesus, that tree, that tree you talked to. And notice he didn't say, 
I was hoping that would work. Uh Uh-uh. Which brings us to the next part. Verse 22 is when Jesus said, have faith in God. When they pointed out to him that the tree he spoke to had done what he told it to do. Did Jesus speak words of power? We've been talking about the power of God and demonstration of the Spirit. The main way that this power was released and manifested was through speaking. Jesus spoke and things happened. Jesus spoke and things stopped. Jesus spoke and things changed. He spoke. And he answered and said, have faith in God. Now I want you to hold your place here and go back to Matthew 21. All right. This is Matthew's account. We're going to pick up. There's, uh, this is kind of into part two of this message, which is maybe another 15, 20 minutes. And just with being time and all of that kind of stuff, um, I think we have enough to work on. I mean, I don't know about you, but I could be speaking to some other words, to some other to some things. And, uh, and it's not too, not too crazy if you understand where the power of your words is. What, he, what he's getting to, but ultimately, um, great examples uh, of as, as you and I really truly are to imitate the Lord, and, um, and and it's true, you might be the only Jesus somebody ever meets, and this is why spiritual growth matters. You ever wonder why it's why even be here? Like, what's the point? Well, you the message that you and I are, are, are to carry is not just to be a message. It's to also carry the power, the experience. You know, our kids, you know what they don't need? Just another Bible story. They need to know somebody who knows the Lord. And so when there's something going on, that there is power in what they're doing because of faith. You know, the exceeding greatness of power to, to to us word who believe. And if we believe, we speak. And so what we're talking about here, we're not trying to t- get you just to start talking things and just start just, uh, but we're talking about your words are power. What are you saying? And if you're not saying it, it's simply because you need to check what you believe and you have to be willing. The only way belief can come is if you're willing to hear. If you're willing to hear, the Holy Spirit will show up. When, he, when you open that Bible, He'll show up and he'll teach you and he'll show you some things that you thought you knew and you thought you knew inside and out and upside down and he'll, then he'll just flip that page and go, well, golly. And we'll start saying some different things if we're willing to hear. Why don't we stand up tonight and we're going to um, just, uh, I'm going to just give you this verse and you might <clears throat> remember, you can look it up. Uh, Google's great because you can maybe type in three or four words of, of a verse and find it, you know. Um, but it's Acts 27, 25, and it said, Keep up your courage, men, for I believe, or I have faith, I have faith that, that in God, and that it will happen just as it was told me. You know, there's things that the Lord has said in His Word, and this would be some good things to start speaking. What has the Lord said to you about your womb. What has he said to you about your finances? What has he said to you about your marriage, about your mind? What has he said? What is, I have faith in God, who, who's the one that has spoke to, to Paul about the ship and how you're going to be preserved and none of you are going to, no one's going to be lost, you know? And so he, he re, re-quoted not what the men on the ship were saying, we're going down, it's going to, because there's a lot of words out there that are saying it's a, going to, yeah, and it just, but what, what did he say? I have faith in God. It'll be unto me just as God had said. So what did God say? Yeah. And, you know, this is sometimes where, uh, this is a great exercise. And, and, if, and if you want to talk about some counseling, this is when counseling works. When you are counseled in the Word of God. When the Word of God, and you say, what, 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 what does God say about it? Well, yeah, yeah, but yeah, no, no. What about, are you willing to hear? Are you willing to hear? If you're willing to hear, what will happen is the Holy Spirit will show up and he'll come, come alongside of you. And that power 
And you will receive power, the ability, the life-giving, life-changing. The only reason it doesn't work is because you don't have the strength or you don't see the, the ability for, for whatever is to, to happen. But when the Holy Spirit comes right alongside you, man, things change. The gifts of the Spirit of God. Man, you know, one of the gifts of the Spirit is the working of miracles. We were singing tonight about the working of miracles. That's a gift of the Spirit. You know how that comes about? That comes about when the Holy Spirit says, why don't you just go ahead and lay hands on, on your wife right there? That's how that comes. It doesn't just come because like somebody blinks their eyes. It comes because you were willing to hear what the Lord said, and all of a sudden the gift of the Spirit was now at your disposal. You don't know how to get out of this spot. You're in this spot, and you're like, Lord, and we're with your kids, and you're with this, and maybe you're dealing with whatever it is, and, and a word of knowledge comes to you. And you say to your son or to your daughter, and you just read their mail, and you tell them what they need to hear that they didn't even know they needed to hear, and they break. The, the thing breaks off of them. What did that come from? The Spirit. These are. This is why it's so important for you and I to be willing to hear. Lord, teach me. What did you say? T tell me again. Tell me again what you said. Tell me again how you want to use me. Tell me again what you spoke to my heart in those pictures. Show that, me, show that to me again. You know, the greatest teachers, sometimes they don't even have to just use their words. They come alongside of you. I remember my math teacher, and she would come right alongside, and she would just say, no, look right here. And you take this right here and move that right there. And you know what she said is this and that and this and that and this and that. And just show me little pictures of this and put this and do that. And, and there wasn't a whole lot of other words. This and that and circle and point. And the Holy Spirit can circle that picture of your heart and, and, and say this right here. That's, right, that's for here. That's for here. Yeah, that is for here. And so I believe it'll be just as you said. And so I think we got some words to work on. Amen. And I, I, wanted, I wanted to just say this out loud a few times tonight. I believe. <laughs> and I don't know if this is the translation that says, I believe. Keep up your courage, man, for I have faith. For I have faith. And I want to just, that, that second portion, I have faith in God that will happen just as told, it was told to me. So let's just say that a few times tonight. Let's use our words. Let's get some things in motion. Maybe you had a, a different report, a different word. It'd be good for you and I to just say this tonight. If you're wondering about your future, if you're wondering about your finances, if you're wondering about you have these big dreams, you have this, whatever, let me tell you, I believe if I can, 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 can commit it all to the Lord, because he cares for me. Thank you, Lord. If you, and I'm more valuable than the lilies of the field. I'm more valuable than the grass that's here today, gone tomorrow. I'm more valuable than the birds. Father, thank you. You know my heart. And man, I'll tell you. So here we go. I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Capitalize that he. I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. I have faith in God. That it will happen just as it was told to me. I have faith in God that it will happen just as it was told unto me. Teach me again, Lord. Tell me again, Holy Spirit. Teach me again. I thank you for your ministry to me, to this people. You said you would bring to our remembrance every word that was spoken to us. Father, thank you for your word being reminded to us. And we say, speak to us again. Tell us again. Remind us of things that you've said, Lord. And we just say, we have ears to hear. We have ears to hear. Lord, we're willing to hear. I'm willing to hear. I'm willing to hear. And I say, I believe. I have faith in you, God. That it will be unto me just as you've said. Father, thank you for these people. The blessing, the gifts, the callings, the impact, the destinies. Every individual.